Watch out, the ozone's here. Everyone, Olympic zone in the house. You're gonna eat ketchup while I'm eating? Well, I think we genuinely like each other most days. <laughs> right before the show, the restaurant upstairs starts pumping out pasta and soup, and so I have this every day. You know, if you work with people this much for this long, occasionally, you know, they annoy you. Can't you see I'm getting my makeup done? What is it with you? We can finish each other's sentences. I think it's our advantage over the other morning shows. I hate this. Karen will tell you that the first thing I do when I'm done with an interview is grab these dopey wipes and tear this stuff off. You know, the makeup people get a buy with me because there's really not much they can do. What are you covering there? A blemish? Basically, they just have to, sh they have to dull the bald spot. A blemish? Did you find a blemish? The hair people have nothing to do with me. It takes a village to put the Today Show on. There are so many people behind the scenes who don't get enough credit for working their thumbs off. On the set, it doesn't look like chaos. In the control room, it looks like more controlled chaos. These conditions down here are a little bit different from New York. A little bit different from New York, but the coffee's a lot better. Less than 30 seconds till showtime, and things are really starting to heat up down here in the control room. Seven, six, five. Blah, 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 blah. Katie will throw it to Matt on tape. It doesn't seem too chaotic down here. No, you know why? I think because all of us have worked together so long, almost uh, 25 years. I am the associate director, so I'm trying to make all this stuff fit. I'm making sure Katie and Matt go the, the length of time they're supposed to go. It's the ozone, again. It's going to like a bad rash. This interview's over in three, two, two one. Okay, I'm having too much fun with you kids. Okay. Stay away from me. <laughs>
and ultimately a sense of purpose and inner peace. Those challenging times and those trials um, taught me a lot about how to make those obstacles opportunities and um, they've given me a lot of strength. For me they're a blessing in disguise. I came from a very country family. One night my parents brought me home a pair of used skates. I was so excited and in the same winter there was a big blizzard in Amishville, Pennsylvania. I went on our back cornfield which was completely flooded and frozen. Sort of skated through all the corn stalks and jumped over the debris and the dirt and, and just skated and I, I loved it. And that was, <laughs> I guess, how I started my career. That little patch of cornfield was like my, my big Olympic sized arena. Just a short six years after skating through the corn stalks, Weir emerged as an alternate at the 2002 Olympic Games. But skating's fastest rising star fell hard and fast a year later at the 2003 U.S. Nationals. I hit the boards at the very beginning of my free program. I was so embarrassed and I didn't know how to take it from there. So I stopped and went to the referee and was like, what, what do I do? Just like, we'll restart your music from where you fell, you keep going. The third jump after I'd restarted, um, I fell really badly, landed in a split. I popped my left kneecap out of place and it was just a mess. So I stood up and I, was, I retired, I was, I was done. Johnny feels U.S. figure skating lost all faith in him in 2003. I was made fun of, dismissed, beaten up with people's words. I was just at the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the bottom, put behind junior level skaters in lines for the international events. Weir began the uphill skate to rebuild his reputation. He hired a Russian choreographer and found redemption a year later at the 2004 Nationals. I skated so well that they couldn't say, oh wait, we can test that and, and you can't possibly be, be first place. Like I just killed it. He deserved it. Skating is all two-faced. The, the whole little world that all figure skaters live in is two-faced. There's someone that's going to smile to your face and say you're beautiful and wonderful, and then they turn around and tell someone else that they're beautiful and wonderful and that you suck. When I just brush it off and say, you know, whatever, they're, they're fat and they're sitting behind a computer screen saying all this stuff about me and I'm actually doing it. So they made me stronger, they made me work for it, and I wasn't going to give them the satisfaction of gloating about it.